evening. Welcome to tonight's webinar. Tonight we're having our final webinar in the 2019-2020 T-Cubed IB webinar series. All of them are available via recording, WebEx recording. You can view them what's called on demand. Dan will be going over that. Tonight's is being recorded. I'm Ruth. I'll be your host tonight. As we're settling in, get accustomed to your WebEx console there. Have a look at audio. Hopefully your the sound is coming through loud and clear. During the event, if you have any problems with your audio, check in the panel and go to communicate audio broadcast. All right, you can disconnect and reconnect. If it continues to give you a problem and it appears that it's on your end of it, you might just close out the WebEx event and view the recording that we'll have later. As we continue tonight, if you have comments or questions to share, do that using the chat window. You can have the chat panel appear. If it's not showing now, sometimes you can look for the dialog bubble, the message bubble, the bottom of your screen, click on that, and the chat panel should appear at the right. When you use the chat panel, send out your questions and comments to all participants. Not all panelists, choose all participants. That way, everybody joining us tonight will be able to see it. Why don't we give that a try tonight? All participants is a selection kind of at the bottom when you use the drop down menu under the two to all participants so let us know where you're um, co coming from tonight all right give you every an opportunity to look in the chat box over there at the right okay reading up and down in our chat window Got some nice geographical representation there. Okay. There's information about tonight's presenter. Daniel is going to be sharing information with you tonight. You can read his bio there. If you have questions about his bio or if something needs to be updated, Daniel can answer that for us. All right, so Daniel, you'll want to unmute your microphone and possibly mute your video. <laughs> All right. How are we today? I'm doing very well, thank you. We had a snowy morning in central Kentucky here. Lots of school systems were closed, kind of unexpected, but lots of weather things going on around the the world actually how are you tonight Daniel uh, a little bit rushed <laughs> okay I, <laughs> uh, I was at my son's talent show um, so uh -huh. I, I just made it home in the last couple of minutes um, so I'm feeling good um, and uh, I hope everybody is uh, this is one of my favorite parts seeing where everybody's from uh, around the country and maybe some some people outside of the country so uh, thank you for all I thank you all for joining us tonight in the last of our, um, at least the first wave of our IBTI webinars. Uh, I hope you are here to learn a little, get a little something out of this and ask some good questions, make some good comments, uh, because at the end of tonight, uh, I would, I'm, I'm really looking for some good feedback on what you would like to see next from TI with respect to IB, uh, because uh, as I said, we've, we've been doing this now. This is going to be our seventh webinar. Uh, we have covered this is the fifth topic, IB topic that we're covering with the new changes starting this year. And then we did a couple more, one just an introductory and then one a, um, a little little uh, aid to your internal assessment portion of IB. Uh, so going forward, uh, as I was talking to some of the people at TI, 
you know, we were kind of wondering what you would like to hear from us next, what you would like to see, um, because, you know, these seven webinars that we have conducted so far, have we've followed a formula uh, for them. We started off by talking about the changes that are coming, uh, and then we uh, went over how TI is kind of jumping into the uh, to the frame of, you know, how can we help with the changes and introducing the new TI website with IB. So, uh, and we went over a few activities just to kind of highlight what's going on there. So by the end of tonight, uh, I'm going to leave a few extra minutes to kind of get your feedback on what you think you would like to see going forward uh, and talk about how, where we're headed uh, because, you know, in a couple of weeks we have our international conference coming up and uh, we, I have two IB sessions uh, there, so if anybody's coming, that'd be great. You can come to my sessions and we can meet face-to-face, -face. Uh, and I'm going to ask people then also what they would like to see. Uh, but I would like you to start thinking about that now uh, and writing down some stuff so uh, by the end, so maybe the last 10 minutes, uh, people can write some information in the chat window so uh, we kind of have an idea of what you would like to see next from TI. Uh, and if you didn't read from my bio, uh, my name is Dan Wilkie, and I am a high school math teacher, uh, and I've been teaching for 24 years. Uh, this is my 12th year in, in South Carolina, uh, but I have taught in uh, several other states. Uh, I've been teaching IB classes for 16 years, um, and out of those 16 years, I've also dabbled in some AP classes, so the, the AB and BC Calc. Uh, so I kind of get both sides of things uh, for those higher level kids. Uh, and, you know, with the changes that are coming, I've been fortunate enough to have some friends kind of on the inside of IB who have delivered me some information to kind of help everybody out. Uh, that does not mean that I am the expert here. Um, and, but I can definitely give you some insight. And as I'm kind of talking, I'll see some comments pop up. And Tom, thank you for sharing. You know, uh, I'm teaching AP BC, Calc BC right now in addition to an IV class. So um, there is maybe a hint <laughs> of a crossover, but not that much. And so uh, thank you for joining us to kind of get a little uh, feel for what IV is about. I appreciate it. Um, but, you know, I've always loved teaching IB. And I really can't wait. Uh, since we are still on the past curriculum, we're going to test the new curriculum uh, this, uh, not until next year. So we haven't really at my school jumped into the new curriculum yet. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what happens next year. Uh, so if anybody also, because I see that we have about 65 people here, which is awesome. Uh, if any of you have uh, gone to training and would like to share something that maybe I have missed, uh, please, in the chat, chat window, please do that. Because I've said this before, if anybody is a, a repeat uh, customer here for these webinars, uh, I want to get your insight. I want to give you my insight. I want this to be a sharing group uh, where we just help one another. Because with the changes that are coming, some changes are huge, some are not so huge. But I think everybody's going to need a little help, and, and I think the more we can help one another, the better we can be. So having said all of that, welcome. You know, thank you all for joining. I, I really appreciate it because after, you know, six webinars, you know, I, I still don't know how many people are going to keep joining us and, uh, and kind of looking for help. So I love the fact that we still get anywhere between 60 and 80 people kind of joining us each webinar. Uh, and I hope we can continue doing this. So what I'd like to do uh, is jump right into the changes uh, for topic five. Uh, so what we're now doing, uh, since we've covered topics one through four already, we're going to jump into the calculus topic. And for those people who are back for more, uh, you are going to see my wonderful PDF spreadsheet uh, that I'm going to show everybody. Uh, so, uh, to do, let's get up to share my screen. All right. So I'm going to pull that up right now. So I've used this one through all of the webinars, uh, and I absolutely love it. 
because it has so much information uh, that, you know, I just, I want everybody to have access to this. And you will have this, uh, this is file is available to you uh, when we are done. Uh, so please, uh, um, you know, use it, abuse it, share it uh, with your school because it has so much good content uh, that kind of explains some things here. Uh, so what you should see, uh, and I'll go down to topic five, since that's where we're at. All right, so in topic five, of course, is calculus. Uh, just to kind of explain this sheet a little bit, uh, along the top, you'll see some color-coded blocks. So anywhere you see this kind of peachy color right here that says new content, that is new to that particular course. Uh, so just kind of looking at this screen, you kind of see over here uh, in the uh, lower right-hand corner uh, of the analysis and approaches higher level, all right, this is new content to uh, that higher level course. So the basic idea of the four new courses that have been created is they basically took the Ivy Studies curriculum and kind of fashion that into the majority of applications and interpretations SL. Uh, and then they took the majority of the math SL and made that the analysis and approaches SL. They took the majority of the current math HL with the calculus option, the new analysis and approaches HL. And then the other options, they kind of divvied those up into, uh, into conjunction with the Applications and Interpretations HL course. Uh, so they, it's a lot of the same content. IB has said that it's basically about 75-80% um, uh, of the material is the same. Uh, so that's out there so that you're not as scared uh, with what's going on. Uh, but that does mean you know, 20 to 25 percent is new stuff. Uh, so that's where you'll see this this kind of peachy looking color new content uh, show up in the four courses. Uh, anything with a green color to it uh, is the material that was in the current studies class. And now if you notice in this first column, it's in the applications and interpretations and the analysis and approaches class. Uh, and that, there's a reason for that. Uh, one thing that IB was trying to do uh, was two things. One, make the SL courses a complete subset of the HL courses. So every student will cover the SL content, no matter if they're SL or HL. Now, and that's one year, one year worth of material, or if your school does it in two years. And then if it's a higher level course, they'd of course do the SL content and then go on to the HL content, which is another, uh, you know, hours-wise, 240 hours uh, of material. So that is basically, uh, you'll notice that not only do we have the greens in the applications and interpretation, but also the analysis and approaches. So that was one thing. They wanted to make a complete subset there. You'll also notice that next to the uh, little sections here, the 5.2, 5.3, you'll see a little asterisk there. And what that means is that it's in the core. IB also wanted to have material that is taught in all four subjects. So anything that has an asterisk, that material will be taught in all four of the classes. Uh, so you can kind of get a guide looking here of what has the asterisk and what doesn't. So you'll notice every, everything on this first page uh, in the applications and interpretations and analysis and approaches in those SL columns, that's part of the core. And 60 hours of your teaching will be part of the core. Now you'll notice that the higher level content, they, they don't have the asterisk, because uh, that's kind of where they split uh, the majority. So, peachy color is new content. Green color is all the material from the current studies now, you know, dumped into the four new courses. Anywhere where you see this purpley color, that is the current math SL, which is now being dumped into uh, the new courses. 
So you'll see a little bit of that in the applications and interpretations down here. All right, something that hasn't been there before. All right, but you'll see a lot of it in the higher level in the second column right here. All right, so basically, you who, sorry, can you hear my dog barking? Uh, <laughs> car outside. Uh, so what you'll see is some of the material that, some of the material that has been in, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, SL only uh, is now covered in the applications and interpretations. And talking to my friends around the country, around the world, in IB schools and in working for IB, uh, that is bringing up some, some kind of uneasy feelings uh, because, you know, some of the studies teachers don't think their students can handle that level of material, uh, and that's making them a little nervous, uh, which I understand. Uh, but what they're trying to do is raise the level <laughs> raise the level for all the classes uh, to make it a little bit more challenging uh, for all students uh, to try to increase that level of ability. Um, so anything with the purple, that was from the current math SL now dumped into uh, the new courses. Uh, then you see the blue for the math HL, anywhere you see the blue, That'll be what's currently in the math higher level, now dumped into those classes. So you can kind of see that along this analysis and approaches. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, uh, that your dogs are barking too. <laughs> um, <laughs> that makes me feel better. Uh, so you'll see that, yes, there's where the current higher level is in the analysis and approaches. And most schools who teach SL and HL currently uh, they're going to teach the analysis and approaches SL and HL, kind of as a continuation of what they're currently doing. Not too big of a difference there. Um, and then finally, the yellow little piece here, uh, that is some of the uh, option content, all right? That is it's showing you how the options are split up. So you will see that the calculus option where we're using evaluation of limits, locatile, that sort of thing. That's going in the analysis and approaches. But kind of going down here, uh, setting up model differential equations from a context, separation of variables, that's going into the applications and interpretation. So they're doing the more application side of calculus in that class, you know, compared to uh, the analysis and approaches class. Uh, and feel free to kind of, again, scroll through this once you get it. Um, and, you know, we can actually get you a link, if possible, Ruth, for this tonight if you don't have it, uh, if this is your first time with us. Uh, anything we can do to kind of speed up that process would be wonderful. Um, so that's kind of the gist of this. Um, and I'm just kind of scrolling through here, and you'll notice that, you know, looking at this first column here, this 5.8, approximating areas using the trapezoidal rule. All right, how many people in math studies have done trapezoidal rule before? Uh, so that's completely new content uh, that they are going to be seeing. Uh, so just kind of be aware of that, um, you know, kind of going forward. All right, so and then finally on this sheet, um, we have at the bottom, you'll notice this last little graph. Uh, here is just showing you what's been added or taken away completely. Now, looking at the subtractions, okay, so in comparison of applications SL to the math studies, there's really nothing in the calculus that has been changed, all right, that has been taken away. Now, looking at the comparison between the new analysis course with math SL, okay, they've taken out volumes of revolution, okay? So that's just, just kind of keeping that, you know, kind of that highlighted for you. Uh, and you can kind of go through. There's really not much with respect to calculus that has been added too terribly much here uh, or taking, taken out, okay? So use this sheet, kind of do what you can with it, you know, 
Uh, I love this because, and I'll just give you a for example, uh, the school I'm at, since we have new math courses, they're kind of updating their course description, and this was my go-to sheet uh, for them. Uh, the math department chair came to me and said, can you help me write this? And we pulled this up and we kind of put, you know, this information, you know, side by side with what it used to be and how can we differentiate between the SL and the HL? Because if you go to the MyIB uh, website and look at the course description, it's a very general description because it says in math SL and HL for analysis and approaches, it gives you a paragraph, okay? Uh, and you really have to kind of look at the curriculum to see where the differences are. I mean, yes, there's 240 more hours of material, uh, and then you'll notice this sheet can kind of go through the topics for you. So that's what we did. We sat down and see what would be important to highlight to prospective students and their parents to kind of show, you know, oh, this is what they're going to learn in the new SL class. This is what they're going to learn in the new HL class. Uh, so this was very useful for me and my department chair as we were going forward uh, with the course description. So just, just if you are interested, please use that. Uh, I love this sheet. Uh, it's, it's, it's my favorite thing we're doing so far um, with this new curriculum. Uh, so please, 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 please use it. All right. So now what I'd like to do uh, after going through this, if there are no questions about this sheet, I'd like to kind of go over what TI has been doing and what I've been doing with TI to kind of help teachers out uh, with respect to the new IB material. So what I'd like to do is take you to the TI website. All right, so basically I'm just going to go to education.ti.com and what I'd like to show you, uh, just a few things in general. Uh, first off, uh, the TI Inspire CX2 calculator. So for those people who uh, are in the market for getting new calculators for their classroom or trying to get their students um, new technology, having them buy that or, or whatever you can do, I would highly recommend the Inspire CX2 um, because with respect to this calculator, uh, I know the 84 is a solid calculator, and, you know, if you're using it and that's all you got, it's great, that's wonderful. Uh, but I just want to highlight that, you know, the 84, even though it's rechargeable and even though it's thinner and even though it has a color screen now, I hate to say this, it's still the 84, okay? Um, so if you are in the market for a new calculator, um, this would be the, the go-to one that I would recommend. Now, I, uh, TI has to update this website uh, because you'll notice that the non-CAST version, which is the white calculator right here, uh, that is allowed on SAT, ACT, AP, IV. So pretty much all the standardized tests that you can think of. Um, over here, the Inspire CX2 CAST, which is the black and blue, uh, it says SAT and AP. It should also say IV because even though a CAS calculator is not allowed on an IB exam, which is true, these new calculators, you have the ability to turn off those CAS functions while the students are taking the exam. So they need to update this, and I'll talk to them at the conference, uh, because I, I think in, in Ruth's slideshow it showed that uh, it's available for SAT, AP, and IB. They just have to update it here. Uh, and that's a new thing just happened in the last month or two. Uh, so uh, that would be my goal. These are the calculators I use in my class. Since I teach a BC Calc class for AP and then an IB Math SL class, uh, and they use those calculators in both of those, when it's time for test taking, I turn off the CAS for the IB, but leave it on for the AP. Uh, so just to make you aware um, that that is a, a cool function uh, of those new calculators. So. If you are in the market for new ones, that would be the one I would highly recommend. But if you love your 84, great, wonderful, it's still a great calculator. Um, uh, I'm just on the side of Inspire, uh, personally. So having said all that about calculators, uh, kind of looking at the home screen here, uh, there are two places you can access the new TIIB website. So the first one uh, is if you go to Activities. All right, you'll notice that 
in the uh, top right-hand corner of this box, it says IB Resources. So that's one place you can go. Or you can go to Resources, and you'll notice in the lower, right hand, lower left-hand corner, it's the IB Resources. So two places to get to it uh, for access to what we are offering our wonderful teachers uh, who need help from TI. So there's my dog again. Uh, anyways. Uh, when you click on that, you'll get to this page, all right? Uh, now, I would love to have my picture right here just helping students, but we'll, we'll work on that with TI. Uh, anyways, what you will see first, uh, explore free activities. So you'll notice right here we have analysis and approaches and browse activities, applications and interpretations, browse activities, all right? Uh, I'm going to come back to that in a second because I'd like to highlight this bottom section first. Uh, before we get to the activities. Uh, on the left here, you, this is where you would go to uh, register for free our webinars. Now, since this is our last round uh, for our initial run of webinars, uh, there are no more IB webinars, but there are still plenty of webinars for you to kind of, you know, register for. So kind of look at, they're all wonderful, you know, different people kind of helping out. Uh, with different ideas, so I really love that. So this is our last one you'll notice right here, is us. So this is where you would register for the uh, webinars. And then over here is, let's say you wanted to, you missed some of the earlier webinars, shame on you if you did, uh, but you would like to hear maybe about topic two. Uh, you would click on the on-demand webinars uh, and you can kind of scroll through and here is the topic two functions and you can view and listen to that right here. So all of the webinars that I've done uh, are on here currently, but what you should notice is that there are additional webinars, and these are webinars that have been done over the past, I don't know how many years, from our teachers and instructors from around the world who have been helping out with IB. So you'll see we got SL and HL and studies exam prep. That's wonderful, especially getting closer to May. Uh, so we also, you know, have different topics, um, just in general topics, how to use the Inspire back to school stuff. So there's a lot of good webinars here for you to peruse. Even if it's from the old curriculum, it still could be helpful if you want to take a look at them. So please use that uh, to your leisure. All right. So next, I'm going to go back to the activity. So what I have been working on since uh, pretty much last April, uh, last April, May time, uh, I've been kind of working with instructors from around the world to search throughout our activities that are on the TI website and see which ones would be most useful for our IB teachers. So I have to give you a, a little warning right now. The activities that are there are not written with IB in mind, okay? Because this is a new endeavor that we're doing. So what me and some other instructors were doing, we're finding activities that were on the TI website that could be a crossover activity for the topics we teach in IB. So when you open up these activities, they're not going to say IB, TI activity. Um, so since this was kind of our first go-round of things, we decided let's pick from the activities we have and try to, uh, you know, give something to the teachers, at least to start, so they can use it in their classrooms and get an idea. Uh, so that was phase one. Uh, our next phase uh, that we're going to be working on are IB-specific activities. So we have probably um, 50 to uh, 70 activities currently for you to pick from with different topics for both the 84 and the Inspire. Uh, and these are activities that, you know, we think uh, can kind of cross over to the world of IB. So how did we kind of make it more IB-like? Well, let's just kind of take a look at the analysis and approaches activities. Uh, and see how it's broken down. So what you'll notice, these are all of the activities that we have chosen for analysis and approaches. Uh, so 
if you click on the current curriculum topic, it'll give you the five topics, and we're in calculus, so we can kind of select that. We can either show all of the activities or select between the Inspire and the 84. Uh, and so these are your activities to choose from. Now, unfortunately, you'll see the majority are Inspire, but we do have a handful of 8384 uh, activities. So you basically can pick kind of what you want. Um, you know, I'll just pick the related rates uh, activity down here. So you'll get an overview, kind of a little screenshot uh, video of what the TI Inspire program looks like. So if I click on that, it, it goes through some of the slides, kind of showing you a related rates. We have water kind of being poured out of a spigot, you know, from this uh, cylinder. Uh, and then it kind of shows you the different steps you'll have to do to uh, perform this activity. Uh, but the cool thing down at the bottom, uh, this is where we're trying to make it uh, more IB-like. Uh, so the download, the first download or the zip file, this contains every file that you would need for this activity. So basically everything you see right here to the right of it uh, is in that zip file. So we have a PDF of both the student activity, the teacher notes, and my favorite part is an IB question. Okay. Uh, we also have Word docs. So and this is something cool that I will talk about in a second. And then we also have the calculator activity. So if you have the Inspire, you would open up this activity to kind of go along with your students. All right. So two things that I'd like to point out. One, I have written now 50 questions, uh, exam style questions, to go along with each of the activities that we had selected. So for our phase one of TI's relationship with IB, yes, the activities we chose were already made from TI and from teachers uh, to help you out in your classroom, not necessarily IB classroom. So what I tried to do is I, I created an IB exam question that relates to this activity. So not only can you use your technology and get your kids active in the classroom and do this activity about related rates, but when you're done, you can then say, Here's how IB would then approach this in an exam style question. Uh, and like I said, all the activities have an IB question attached to it. We have 50 of them so far. Um, and that's just we've done two rounds of them uh, right now. So the goal is uh, to do, uh, we, we kind of do it in batches of 25. So my goal by the uh, start of the new school year is to have 100 questions for you to choose from. Uh, in association with all the activities that we're going to have. Uh, so I think that's a great place to start, especially since next year is the testing year. And so, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we're offering just to help you out. Uh, and what I love is, yes, we have a PDF that kind of locks everything in place. So if you like what we have, you could just hand out the PDF and have the students, you know, go to town with it. Or let's say that you don't like something about the activity. You also receive the Word doc. So you can change it and do whatever you want with it. So it's really up to you how special you make it. So if I were just to open up that IB question, just to kind of give you a sense of, of what it is. Um, so here's what we're dealing with. All right, so what you have is the actual question here. Water's being poured into a cone. Okay, find the rate at which the water is being poured when the height is six centimeters. So a five mark, you know, related rates question. Uh, it kind of tells you it goes with the analysis and approaches uh, and analysis, uh, applications and interpretations, higher level uh, courses. So it gives you the question, but then it also gives you the mark scheme and how the points are broken down. But what I love about the Word document here is Maybe you want to change up the numbers a little bit. Make it your own. Please do. Just that, that's why we give you a Word document. So it's an exam style question, okay? So why don't you change it around and make it your exam style question, okay? So please feel free to do that. Um, you know, I want to share with you. I want to make your life easier in the classroom if I can. Um, and so that's, I really like this part of it. Um, even though it takes a while to write all the questions, 
Uh, I think it's worth it in the end for you all uh, and for my classroom, too, uh, because I use them also. Uh, but having said that, uh, again, use it to the best of your ability. All right? So that is something I really, truly love about these. Uh, but the other thing I love about using the Inspire is when I click on this activity of related rates, okay, and, you know, I go to my calculator. Um, in my classroom, I use the Inspire CX2s, and I have the navigator system. I'm very lucky. Uh, so when we were doing related rates, I used this. Uh, where can we find this? All right, so thank you for asking. So if you go to, uh, here we'll go to the opening page. So if you go to education.ti.com, all right, that is the TI website. And then you can either go to activities and in the top right corner, IV resources, or resources, lower left-hand corner, IV resources. All right, and then you can access them in the free activities, okay? So hopefully that's, that helped you out there. All right. Um, but again, not everybody has the Inspire like I do because in my class I can pull this up uh, within 30 seconds. You're welcome. Uh, then I can just send them to everybody's calculator and we're ready to go. Uh, and then we can kind of go through this activity together. We have some example explanation information uh, and it leads students through the beginning stages of how you should handle a related rates problem, all right? And then it gives some pretty cool visuals, some animation that we got going on here to kind of let students see it as it's happening, um, which I think is pretty cool. And then it kind of gives you some more information. So it really takes them step by step uh, through this activity uh, and then kind of, oh, we even get to some implicit differentiation and then by the end of this, you are actually having the students do their own problem. Uh, and that's why I like doing this stuff with, uh, with the Inspire. Uh, now, doing it with the 84 is a little bit different. Sometimes you do have an activity that can be opened up and saved on the 84. Sometimes it's a sheet, a PDF, and the students follow along on their calculator with the sheet that they're given. Um, and, and that's really the trade-off you make uh, with the 84 and the Inspire. Uh, I really get the, you know, in my personal opinion, the Inspire is a little bit more hands-on. The kids can kind of use their calculator not to do the work for them, but to get some better visuals and kind of lead them through uh, the problem in a, in a more technological way. Um, but, you know, you got to use what you got in the classroom. So if you got the Inspire, great use these. If you got the 84, you know, we can go back to our activities, you know, in the calculus section and say, hey, let's look at just the 84s and say, which one looks good? How about just graphing relationships between, you know, uh, some first and second derivatives? So we can kind of click on that one. And again, it kind of shows you some screenshots about what you're going to be doing. So down here, you'll notice that there aren't as many files. So you have a student activity, a teacher notes, but you still do have an IB question uh, that you can use for that. So um, we, like I said, we try to still incorporate, you know, an IB question for both the 84 and the Inspire uh, to kind of go through. So this kind of gives you a graph of a, of a cubic, which is your uh, original function. All right, then it says sketch the graph of the derivatives. So I really like this where they can get their hands on and kind of use the rules of increasing, decreasing, what's a min and what's a max, and what do the zeros mean, and kind of have them figure out what the derivative of the graph looks like. Uh, so again, these are available for both Inspire and 84. But, you know, with the 84, we're really relying on the student activity more so than a calculator activity. So if we kind of uh, open up that, here's your activity. So you'll notice your objectives. Uh, realize information about a graph based on the first and second derivatives. Uh, learn about a function's derivative. Is it positive when the function increases, negative when the function decreases? Uh, so basically, you're just kind of going through those, you know, 
uh, little bits of information. So then you're kind of the activity now, unlike the Inspire where the calculator document is taking you page by page and leading you through the problem, students will follow along in a similar fashion uh, with the paper activity. So again, that's what I think the trade-off is. But again, it leads you through how to do things on the calculator, how to set your window, what mode you should be in. Uh, so it really holds their hand in the beginning before they kind of let, let them go, you know, to kind of see, you know, what's going on. What can they do on their own? Can they grasp stuff, you know, by themselves without the calculator? Uh, so I love both activities. I love that TI has a nice model where they kind of go through the beginning process with them, but then they say, okay, let, let go, do what you can uh, on these, um, just to kind of see how you can interpret and then you kind of teach back to the teacher uh, the information. So those are just a couple activities from the analysis uh, and approaches classes. Um, so let's go back and see real quick the other variety. So let's see the applications and interpretations. We'll browse those. So here we have, let's pick the calculus topic again. You'll see some overlap, okay, between them. There's not as many. Uh, and the reason that is because the level of calculus definitely goes down a bit when you are in the applications and interpretations. But you'll notice that we still have the related rates. We still have the optimization because that's where we're applying the calculus that we are learning. Uh, so that's basically going to, to be part of uh, that group. So my hope, okay, and I said this before, is that in our next round of activity, uh, the goal is to really do more IB-based activities for you and for me and for all the IB teachers around the world. So I would love eventually to have a plethora of topic one, two, three, four, and five activities that you can go to. Not necessarily an everyday thing, but, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have a, a once a week you can do an 84 activity or an inspire activity for a main topic that you are teaching in calculus? Uh, or for, you know, trigonometry, or for, you know, function. So having something like that at your disposal to kind of break up the monotony of, of you, know, you know, how do you teach math and how do you make it more interesting, how do you make it more applicable to what we're dealing with in the world today, um, just to kind of have that, because that's something that each of these activities like to do is like to make that little connection, which I think IB does a very good job of. Uh, and so when I'm writing my questions for this particular, you know, website, I am thinking, can I put in a real world situation? You know, that's actually, you know, the kids will say, oh, I understand that. You know, I can apply that. Um, so that's what we're looking forward to, uh, kind of going forward. Uh, now, that's what TI has done since July, uh, this is the the website was launched right at the end of July. So, and this is where we're at right now. Uh, so, I'm going to talk a few minutes about what's going to happen in a couple weeks, and then uh, for the last ten minutes or so, I'm going to ask for your opinion uh, and what do you want to see going forward? Because honestly, I want to do this for you. Uh, PI wants to do this for you. Uh, and let me preface that. I'm not the only one doing this. So this isn't just me kind of putting this all together. Uh, I mean, I'm a big part of it, but I really would love your input on what you would like to see next coming from TI to help you out. So um, in two weeks, so actually two weeks from tomorrow, uh, TI is holding its annual international conference. Uh, so every end of February, beginning of March, uh, they have a conference for three days, uh, Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, uh, where we 
get together, you know, there's usually anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 or more people at these conferences just sharing what they're doing with TI technology. Um, so it ranges from, you know, basic just how you teach your class and how the technology is incorporated there, or all the way up to how the technology runs your class and how it's an, a part of your everyday course. So these three days are some of my favorite days of the year because I am with some of the most passionate people when it comes to math and science and technology that I just can't wait to learn from them. So if you ever have a chance to go to a conference, uh, I know the, uh, the NC NCTM is, is, is an excellent conference, but I, since I love technology so much, this is the conference for me, uh, just because, again, I learn so much over those three days from people that I, I look forward to seeing every year. Uh, so if you get a chance to go, it's in Dallas, and um, it's, it's a great opportunity. So me personally, uh, I am speaking at five sessions. Uh, two of those sessions happen to be IB related. So the first uh, is Saturday morning. So it's going to be uh, Saturday, March 14th. And it is the first conference, uh, first session of the day. And I am going to be basically doing something similar that I have been doing with all of the webinars, kind of going through some activities, talking about what TI has been doing with IB, uh, with its new website, and some of the changes that have been happening. Uh, so if you are there, please come see me. I'd love to meet you face-to-face -face and talk to you. Because at the end of that session, I'm going to take time out and say, what do you want to see from TI, that how we can support IB? Uh, so uh, I'm doing the same thing right now in the next few minutes. Uh, I would love to hear that. The second IB session that I'm doing is just a kind of informal, we're calling it the IB coffee chat. Uh, and that is Sunday morning of the conference. And it's just me, my friend, uh, Jim Nakamoto, who uh, is not only an instructor for TI like I am, but also is uh, a former chief examiner, uh, principal examiner, um, and still works. And he, does, he teaches all of the workshops around the country with respect to the new curriculum. So he is uh, much more knowledgeable than I am. And I, I'm going to let you know a little secret. He's where I get a lot of my information from. Uh, so if you have a chance and you're there, uh, please can kind of join us uh, for those. Uh, I would love to meet you face to face. And thank you, Ruth, for taking that back. I was going to suggest that. So you can kind of see here the, those two. Um, now my other sessions, in case you are interested, uh, I'm doing a Connecting Algebra and Science with Technology, uh, kind of right after my TI one. So it's one right after the other. Uh, and something that I'm kind of proud of, too, is I've been selected in, to do a presentation in what's called a 7 for 7. Um, it's where they selected seven teachers, instructors, uh, and they got seven minutes to basically share something uh, with everybody who's in attendance because it's the last session of the day. There's no other sessions going on. It's in the big ballroom, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, mine is entitled Share Your Passion. Uh, I'm closing the 7 for 7, so uh, if you're there, please come see me. I'd love to, uh, to I'd love for you to be part of it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So, uh, having said all that, does anybody in the chat window have anything they'd like to share uh, to basically have something for us to go forward? Do you have any ideas, anything you'd like to see TI do with respect to IB uh, that would help us go to our next phase? Uh, so I would love to hear you right now. I see there's, wow, we now have over 70 people who have joined us, so that's wonderful. Uh, does anybody have anything that they would like to uh, share, say, comment on? we got about 10 minutes left here. I'd love to hear. And if nobody shares anything, that's great. Uh, <laughs> it's still okay because we do have some ideas, uh, but I would like to hear from you. 
Um, uh, I'm just looking forward to the next step here. Next step here. So, um, anybody? Anybody at all? Some other cool things that if you get a chance to middle and this and strategies. So I'm going to write this stuff down. To help solve problems. Opportunities to get elementary risk students. Cool. Opportunities. Gauge. Now, that's something important uh, because my school, we are a PYP and a DP school. Um, and so we are becoming an MYP school. So that's actually something I'm looking forward to. Uh, for that, okay, Solids of Revolutions, cool, I like that, cool, cool, um, that's awesome, yeah, and just keep rolling them in, uh, so just to kind of speak about other things as now we're going forward, um, other sides of TI that we're trying to incorporate, uh, with IB is also kind of a more um, technological and uh, coding side of things, transformations, thank you. So if you do attend the conference, parametric and polar graphing, I love this, thank you. Love it, love it, love it. Geological, ooh, like that. If you ever have any interest in, um, you know, coding and robotics, and there's some cool stuff that TI is doing with that too with its innovator and its TI Rover uh, and its new, uh, they have an RGB array for color coding uh, and that's pretty cool too. Uh, so there's a lot going on. Um, you know, I just, there's so much that TI does and you know, there's so many different avenues that they're you know trying to help teachers out with um, that just seeing what's out there um, going to the conference is just, and I know that sounds like a commercial for going to the conference, but there's just so much there that you can get um, uh, and learn, which is great. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Coding activities with rumors. So, Daniel, pardon me for interrupting. While you were yep. uh, responding to some of the chats, I went ahead and uh, just gave a preview of the eventmobi.com link that I had sent out in the chats that takes you right to where you can browse the program, browse for presenters. So that's what I was kind of showing in the background while you were sharing that. You can also search by topic. So if you get to attend the international conference, you can look up where is there more information, where are there more sessions about coding and Rover. And you can, you can basically find what you're looking for by using that link to the app before you get there. And brings us to the next one. During each webinar, we have a drawing of people who are attending to see who gets the complimentary registration. And tonight's winner is, let me do the random drawing here. Congratulations to Janina Perez. Congrats. So somebody, Tom had mentioned something about a 3D image from Inspire we could save for printing. Uh, we're actually, I'm in a chat room, a chat group 
uh, about that actual topic. Uh, so we are actually working on that right now. So um, it's not out there yet, but uh, I'm hoping that that will be something that's discussed heavily. Uh, we have a face-to-face -face with our chat group at the conference. So I'm hoping that's going to be discussed more. So, Tom, just hold tight on that. So that, that's great that you said that. Um, but congratulations, Janina. I'm sending out, a, again, that link to the conference program where you can look at all the events. You can uh, search by presenter. You can see where Dan is presenting. To see his Sunday coffee chat, you'd have to look under special events, Joe. Just so you know, search by day, search by topic, search by presenter. It's all there. In the chat window, I'm going to send out the link where you can create your certificate of attendance for tonight's webinar. You will also be getting that link in email. Just within a couple of days, you'll get that link again, plus the link to the documents, Dan's spreadsheet and slides for tonight. And I just uh, posted my uh, email. If anybody has any questions, comments, you think of something in the future, uh, and you just want to let me know, um, so just please, please, please email me. And thank you. Yes, we are definitely going to do more with geometry. Uh, so thank you, Dee, for that one. As Dan mentioned, tonight's event was the last in this season's IB webinars. I expect there will be more coming because people are always asking for things and Dan is always eager to respond to those needs. Um, there are other scheduled webinars currently on the schedule. Uh, we have some of those listed. I know that they'll be adding some more to these, some, uh, like some special events, maybe not on a Tuesday night. So just keep checking back to the webinar link to find out more about it. Anybody else have anything to share, future things, comments? I want to thank everybody so, 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 so much uh, for this. Uh, this is our seventh webinar. It's been fantastic, and I can't wait to do more uh, about IB. So thank you all so much for, for joining us.